Uh, thank you uh, so much for coming out the, uh, this evening to do yoga, all of us together. Um, this will be our last Monday on Zoom. Next week, we're back in the building, but I'm going to continue uh, the Wednesday classes on Zoom uh, for the unforeseeable future. I think that's the correct phrase. Uh, but tonight will be the last Monday. Next Monday, we'll be back uh, in the venue. Enrique is going to play uh, some uh, 60s music while we do yoga and we'll stay on Mondays in the building and I'll do uh, Wednesdays still here on Zoom for the people that prefer the Zoom class because each thing has its own different quality and I can only be at one place at a time. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit uh, today and uh, we are going to do uh, the uh, no push-ups class, because I get a lot of uh, requests for that. Some people are going, yay, right now. There will be work, there will be standing work. Yes, thank you, Julie, again for the hand claps. And um, I just want to say something. When, you know, when I got into yoga, I didn't really exactly know what I was getting into. I was looking to like find peace in my mind and heart and soul and all those things. And um, I did find pieces of that. And uh, I've had awakened moments and experiences, which is almost, I feel like almost like it, it's things you, you shouldn't talk about those things. But if you listen to my podcast, you've heard me talk about those. And I just wanna give you the messages that you know I have received kind of over the years and also repeatedly. The most biggest message I've always received from whatever you want to call the upper universe, the people that live above us, uh, you know, the gods or what have you. I've got this message a few times. It's everything's all right. Everything's all right. And that message, and it sounds like it's in English, that message is, was more of a feeling because, you know, why would the universe talk to me in English? That would be ridiculous. So I, when I get the feeling it turns into English and then I understand, um, you know, what the message is. And as far as like awakening, I was always looking for awakening or um, I used to, the second half of my book was called Still Not Enlightened. I always thought that enlightenment was going to be like all of your problems are removed, but enlightenment is about seeing your problems in a different way and seeing them maybe not as problems um, or having uh, a spiritual awakening that leads you to an altered view of your so-called problems and then they make more sense. And I'll tell you one more thing before we get to the, um, the yoga. The biggest thing I learned in some of these so-called spiritual awaken moments besides the everything is okay message is that my decisions in my life have created my life that I am driving the vehicle on a, on a certain level you know and the choices I make it's it's my life it's you know it's like that Pink Floyd song where he talks about missing the starting gun you know the starting gun is fired and we are choosing what to do with our lives and we're choosing how that goes and those choices lead us in a certain direction. So uh, on a pretty big and most important level, we are in charge. And no matter how that works out, it sounds like, oh, you're like, I'm in charge. Oh no, that's frightening. So then we go back to the other message that I've gotten repeatedly, which is uh, everything's all right. Everything's gonna be all right. Everything's in the right place. and. Uh, Thank you so much for coming out this evening. And we're gonna start and we're gonna spend a lot of time in the seated position. So uh, let me scooch on back. Well, actually, let me stay up front because I wanted to do this one again and I did it uh, quite a few months ago. So this is referred to as the deer mudra. It's supposed to look like a deer, I guess. So, and this in itself is, a, so it's the middle finger down into the palm and then the pointing finger down in the palm. I know the beginning of class is very unusual for me to sound like a yoga teacher like that, but I wanted to say those things today. Anyways, this is the deer mudra. We're gonna do alt nostril breathing. 
uh, just a little bit of it. I'm not even gonna set a timer. I was gonna set a timer for them. I'm not even gonna do that. So we're gonna take the knuckle of the pointing finger and put it in what people call the third eye. This keeps our elbow up and keeps the passageway of our breathing clear. I remember, and this isn't exactly what my teacher in India said. He said something like this. When you're doing it like this, which a lot of people teach it like this, you're breathing back in your garbage breath. That you're breathing into your hand and then breathing it back in. So he taught me to do it with the elbow up. And that way the breath can come and go uh, without like having a blockage on it. So we're gonna take these two fingers here and we're gonna close the left nostril, keeping the uh, knuckle in the third eye. We're gonna breathe in through the right uh, nostril. We're gonna close both nostrils and then out through the left. We're gonna breathe back in through the left. We're closing both nostrils and then out through the right. Then back in through the right. Closing both nostrils, out through the left. Back in through the left. Closing both nostrils, out through the right. Back in through the right. Closing both nostrils, out through the left. Back in through the left. Closing both nostrils, out through the right. In through the right, closing both nostrils, out through the left. In through the left again, closing both nostrils, out through the right. In through the right, closing both nostrils, out through the left. In through the left, closing both nostrils, out through the right. One more in through the right, closing both nostrils out to the left. And then let's just put the hands down for a moment and I'm gonna scoot back a little bit. Good, uh, we're gonna put the right hand straight out forward, keep the shoulder down. We're gonna pull the fingers back a little bit and we're gonna breathe here, just in and out through the nose. The rest of the class will just be either simple breathing in and out through the nose consciously or restricting the throat, creating the full ujjayi breath. All right, now we're gonna do the other side, left hand out, we're gonna pull those fingers back and we're gonna breathe here. We're gonna try to keep those shoulders level as best we can. For whatever reason, that arm comes up, the shoulder comes up. Take your time, keep breathing here. Good, right arm all the way up. We're gonna bring it down the back. We're gonna take the other, the left hand and grab the elbow, push the head back against the arm, pull the uh, core against the low back. Pulling the core in, we do that a lot, in and up even. We're gonna breathe here. Very nice, let's switch the hands, left hand all the way up, uh, down the back, and uh, we'll grab that elbow, head pushing back. You can feel that uh, pushing and stretching into the uh, shoulder joint here uh, when the head pushes back against the arm. And of course we're breathing. Right, uh, hands on the knees, straight spine to the crown of the head. And we're gonna draw a big circle on the sky. Like that circle on the sky, I, did, I recorded myself doing this at, at a Runyon and put it on TikTok and I said, it's like cutting a hole in the sky, like an escape hatch. A lot of people thought that was funny. I don't that is kind of funny, I guess. Keep breathing, keep moving. It's 
pose is supposed to be real good for your digestion. So much of yoga is supposed to be good for your digestion. And then the opposite direction. So we reverse those circles or these circle. Deep breathing all the time, feeling the body, controlling the breath. Just a little more. Good, back to center. I like my aunt, my, my aunt or my aunt, she called this one the seated cat cow. So we're gonna lunge the lower set of ribs forward, looking up. And as we breathe out, we're gonna arch and look at the floor or the mat. And we're gonna keep doing that. In breath, looking up, out breath, kind of arching the cat back. We'll do an official cat cow later. This is what we'll call the seated cat cow. I bet it has another name. We just keep breathing and moving. This one comes from Kundalini. I wasn't uh, traditionally trained to teach Kundalini, but I like a few of these poses. I sneak them in from time to time. We'll keep moving and keep breathing in the nose. You may notice occasionally I breathe uh, in the mouth, and that's a uh, <laughs> Wim Hof influence, it's just accidental. Should be always in the nose, in and out through the nose, but it's not a big deal as long as we're breathing. Good, back to center. Let's put the right hand down with the fingers pointing out and away. The left palm's gonna face the ceiling. We're gonna come up and over, long reaching all the way through the side. We're keeping both arms straight. And then we're gonna look up along the elbow to the ceiling and we'll take several more breath here. Excellent. And we'll switch sides, left hand down, right arm up and over. We'll look along the elbow again to the ceiling. Keep breathing here. Good, back to center. Every time I do a reverse plank, anyone who wants more of a workout out of tonight's class is welcome to do top of push up, down, up dog, and down dog, what we'll call vinyasa. Otherwise, feet straight out in front, toes uh, pointed, fingers pointing towards the toes. We're going to lift up the hips and look at the ceiling. And then we're going to come back down. We're going to keep the left leg extended out and we're going to bend the right leg. We do want that knee falling towards the earth. You can push it down a little bit. It'll go down over time. Uh, left hand either grabs the left toes or the left shin, unless you've got a belt you can wrap around the foot, which is excellent. We're going to breathe in, reaching up. And we're going to breathe out and fold everything down and all the way back up on the in-breath and all the way back down. And every time we come down, that's the out breath. And we're going to keep breathing in the nose. Next time you're up, go ahead, stay up, and we will look and continue breathing, but we're going to look to the reaching hands. We continue breathing in the nose. And then let's do our best to put the right hand on the left hand or the foot. We're going to stay staring straight forward and just lengthen the bottom of the leg. If you prefer to do the forward fold, go ahead. Otherwise, 
We're gonna pull the shoulder blades back and we're gonna breathe here just a little bit. Excellent, let's do the other side. So right leg goes out, right on right, grabbing the shin or belt, or if you can get to the toes with the legs straight, excellent. All the way up on the in breath, all the way back down. And uh, again, over and over, out breath, almost always on the downward fold as the lungs are getting squished and squeezed as we downward fold, all the internal organs are. But next time you're up, go ahead and stay up and we'll look to the reaching hand. We'll try to use both hands to grab the foot or you can, I'm just grabbing the hand. I'm gonna pull the shoulders back, looking straight forward. You're welcome to do full forward fold. The shoulders back and straight forward uh, might be better uh, well, for men, but it's up to you. You can message me about the whys of that if you like uh, later. Good, reverse plank or vinyasa for those of you that are working out harder. I'm gonna lift the hips, look at the ceiling. And back down. Let's bring these soles and the feet together and pull those feet in real tight so that we can grab the small toes with the left hand and the right toes on top of that and just sit up really tall, shoulders back, and you can butterfly the legs. Core is in a bit, reaching the crown of the head up. You don't have to butterfly the legs, but you can. Good, pull the shoulder blades back and together. See if you can maintain that and forward fold, pushing the elbows against the leg, both legs, trying to put the heart on the big toes. So we're gonna breathe here. And yes, the shoulder blades pulling back and together does restrict our uh, forward fold, but it's better for the back. So we're gonna breathe. Good, back up, reverse plank or vinyasa if you prefer. We lift the hips, look at the ceiling. You should be able to fit a vinyasa in this time, a uh, little time space. We're gonna come back down. Let's cross the legs. Cross them as comfortably as you can. You don't have to do what I'm doing here. Just cross them comfortably. Hands on the shoulders, uh, fingers down the front, thumbs down the back, elbows pointing out uh, and away. Turn to one side, in breath, turn to the other side, out breath. And then as you get a feel for the body, if one side is um, a little tighter, put the out breath on that uh, tight side piece. You could also bring the arms up in a like goddess posture or all the way out is a lot of leverage. So uh, just be aware of your body, keep breathing. Very nice. Let's put the right hand on the left knee. The left hand, it could sit right behind you, six inches down from the tail with fingers pointing away. 
where you can come all the way around, grabbing the shirt, the pocket, and the leg. If you're in lotus, you will grab the foot. Spine straight up to the crown of the head. As we twist through the torso, the head goes for the ride, just uh, looking back gently at the eyeball line. Good, let's come all the way over to the other side. So left hand grabs the right, right hand either behind you or all the way around, getting a hold of the pocket, the leg or whatever is around there. Sitting up tall. Good, back around. Let's uh, reverse plank or vinyasa, it is your choice. So lift up, looking at the ceiling. Great, and then back down. We're coming to hands and knees because we're gonna do that cat cow that we talked about earlier. But this is hands and knees. So knees are two fists apart, hips over the knees, shoulders over the wrist. Middle finger straight forward. We drop the belly looking up. That is the uh, in breath. And then we arch the back looking at the legs. That's the out breath. And uh, whatever rhythm you want to do that, I've seen people do it really fast. That always freaks me out. But you can do it fast. You can do it slow, but do it with your breath. You can close your eyes on this pose too. All the movement can make you dizzy. Uh, back to center, we're going to look over the right shoulder and see the tail. And then uh, over to the other side, please. Good, and then push yourself up to being on your knees. I'm going to be also on the toes rather than flat feet. If you can really open in the back, you could be uh, flat feet. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to be on toes. Thumbs in the back, elbows pulling together. We're going to look up. Camel pose, you could stay right here. If it's uh, possible for you, you could put the fingers on the uh, heels, tightening the legs a little bit, continue looking up. And then you see if the feet were flat, why it'd be further away. Or you can just keep the thumbs uh, in the back here, breathing, looking at the ceiling. Good, back down to hands and knees uh, for some more cat and cow. Let the belly drop down, breathing out, arching the back. And continuing the move with the breath. I really don't like to do camel unless I have cat cow on either side of it. It makes my back tense. And the cat cow makes it totally doable. And after teaching yoga and doing yoga for 20 years, teaching for 17 or so, I have taken a couple of things into my own hands and made my own decisions about right and wrong. Back to center, we're gonna look over the right shoulder, seeing the tail, and then over to the other side. And then however you can comfortably, let's stand. And we will be at the top of the mat. And I'm going to let this area here represent top of the mat for me. We're going to do warrior two, stepping the left foot back about the distance of one of our legs, heel to heel align, knee over the ankle, and arms out uh, for a moment. Let's do this little self-adjustment. We're going to take the right hand on the inside of the knee and just hold it there. And the left hand is going to grab the hip, trying to pull it back. And then try to maintain that opening and bring the arms back up. We drop the shoulders, hold the core, look at the right hand and breathe.
Very nice. Straight that right leg so we can pivot. Right toes 45, left toes straight out the back of the mat. Gonna bend the left leg now for warrior two. And let's bring the left hand down on the inside. Right hand grabs the hip, pulling back, opening up. Try to maintain that openness. So we're gonna bring the arms back up and we'll take several breaths right here. Good, straight that leg. We're gonna turn the left toes to 45, right toes out. We're gonna keep the leg straight because we're gonna do triangle. So we're gonna reach out a bit and then right hand down, left arm up. You can look to the reaching hand. You can have palms facing out and away. If you can keep the shoulders stacked, so it's left hand over left shoulder over right shoulder over the shin and grab the big toe, you're welcome to. Keep breathing here. Think about lengthening the tail to the crown of the head. Um, back up, we pivot again. Right toes to 45, left toes out. We're gonna reach out over the uh, left leg and left hand down. Right arm up and all the same stuff, but keep breathing. Good, up again, we pivot again, left toes to 45, right toes out. Let's do warrior two again for a moment. So we bend that right leg, knee mostly over the ankle. We'll take a moment in warrior two. We're gonna do extended side angle. So we're taking the center of the right forearm on the leg, but near the knee and left arm up and over. You're welcome to stay here. You're welcome to put the right hand on the ground if you prefer. Let's breathe. Excellent, back up, we straight the right leg, we'll turn that foot into 45 degrees, left foot straight out, we're bending the left leg, so we get a warrior two again for a moment here. And we repeat extended side angle now on the other side, so forearm on the leg, out near the knee, right arm up and over, we keep breathing. Back up to center, we're gonna do horse. So we're gonna have the toes slightly splay, the knees opening uh, out. We're gonna push the walls out today and we're gonna stay here breathing. Great, straight the legs, turn the toes to run straight forward. So they will be, the outside edges of your feet will be like the outside edges of your mat. We're gonna reach a straight up and then straight down. So the hands will fall directly under the shoulders. Maybe it's just fingertips down, great. Let the head come down, 
start bringing the elbows back through the legs. Maybe your palms get down, maybe they get close. And we'll breathe here. Good, back up, reach out to the ends of the fingers and behind the back, we'll intertwine those fingers, uh, pushing the palms together if you wanna release tension in the upper back. You could have palms uh, apart that you can forward fold further with palms apart, but it's more in the shoulders. And we're gonna forward fold, here we go. Keep on breathing, light toes, you can lift the toes even. Good, back up, uh, touch the ceiling. And back down, we're gonna grab a shins, ankles, or if you can keep the legs straight, big toes with the peace fingers, elbows pulling away from the ears. Pull the elbows away from the ears, even if you just have the ankles. And we're forward folding, so let the head drop. And uh, let's stay down low, both hands over to the right for a moment, left shoulder under and through. And over please to the other side, right shoulder under and through. Good, let's come back up to standing. We're gonna shorten the stance to about three feet apart. We're gonna turn the right toes straight out the front of the mat with the left toes at about 45 degrees. And we're gonna bring the arms out so that also the chest is facing the front of the mat. We grab elbows or reverse prayer. We're gonna pull those shoulder blades back together and maintain that again. And then we're gonna forward fold and look at the right foot. We're going to stay here a little longer. Good, back up, let's pivot. Right toes to 45, left toes out. I like to bring the arms out so I can reorient uh, the shoulders to the back of the mat now. And then behind the uh, back, we'll grab elbows, so reverse prayer again. We're going to look up and then we're going to fold down, looking at the left foot now. Great, back up and let's step to the top of the mat and we we'll shake it out a little bit. We're gonna do a few pieces here from the top of the mat. So standing on the left foot, I'm gonna bring the hands uh, to the heart center and do warrior three. So you push off that right foot a little bit, coming forward, balancing, trying to make the body parallel to the earth, somewhere close or on the way to, don't worry about it.
You could stay here, Warrior Three, or you could do Arda Chandrasana, left hand down, right arm up. I am pulling my right big toe towards my shin. It's helpful to the arch of my foot. I got super high arches. They're my mother's. And switch the hands if you like. That's a little tough. Great. Let's stand, step it out a little bit. We'll do that all on the right. And so standing on the right, hands to the heart, and we lift the left leg up. Come forward right here. Warrior well, three again. We take a few breaths, maybe more. And right hand down, left arm up. We breathe here. And switch the hands. All right, please stand again, top of the mat. You can shake it out a little bit. We're gonna stand on the left foot, we're gonna do tree. If you've never done uh, this version that I do as an alternative, you might wanna try it because it affects the body differently. Do tree how you like, but if you feel like it tonight, put the right ankle just above the left knee. So you push that uh, right ankle against the leg as you point the knee straight out to the side, you get this nice stretch on the uh, kind of inside of the right quad, uh, which I like quite a bit. And it also rolls around uh, back into the glute a little bit with this uh, pressure point. And then hands to heart are all the way up. And we breathe here. Excellent. Uh, let that down, step it out. And let's do the other side standing on the right. And if you were willing to try this other version tonight, I would do it on both sides. And also, as I'm pushing the uh, ankle uh, up above the knee, but against the leg, I can flex the foot too, opening up to the uh, arch and the fascia here. Very nice, let's let that down, step it out. So standing on the left foot, we're gonna lift the right knee and the right hand is gonna grab the right knee, left hand on the hip. Stay here, you can come down and grab the big toe, extending the leg, take your time. Go ahead and open that leg out to the right as we look out over the left shoulder. Go ahead back to center, leg out on its own. Excellent, let that down, step it out. And we'll do uh, the other side. Standing on the right, we lift the left, left on left. If you extend the leg, please do that uh, the same on this side if possible. Breathe here. And let's open that leg out to the left. 
as we look over the right shoulder. And back to center, leg out on its own. Excellent, let that down, step it out. Let's take the feet uh, so that the heels are directly under the hips, the toes are fairly splayed out. And we're coming down into a squat. We're gonna put the uh, elbows in the legs, hands in prayer, pushing together and lengthen up the back like we're trying to get a little taller. We'll take several breaths here. You're welcome to sneak in a crow or headstand. Otherwise, just a few more breaths here. Excellent. Hands are straight forward. We're coming all the way up to the ceiling. Pull the core in, maybe arch back, and then back down with the hands straight forward. And then uh, number two, up again, all the way up, 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 arching if you like, totally optional, the arch, and then back down. And uh, last one, all the way up again, lifting. And back down, and we're gonna come to hands and knees. So from hands and knees, we're stepping the right foot top of the mat. We'll stay on the left knee, we're gonna release the arms up like a big funnel. Could step the right foot further if you care to. We'll take a few breaths here. Good. Let's take the left elbow outside of the right leg. Hands in prayer, pull in towards the chest. You're welcome to roll back onto the ball of the left foot, straighten the left leg. You're welcome to keep the knee down, which is what I will do. And let's breathe here. Good, hands back down, let's switch sides. Left foot up to the top, arms up again like a big funnel. We breathe here. Good, we twist, right elbow outside and left. Hands in prayer, and we'll copy what we did on the other side. So if you lifted the knee on the right, straight the leg, please uh, go ahead, do the same. Good, switch the legs again. Right foot back up to the top, hands straight up to the ceiling. We'll take a couple of breaths here. And then let's come down on the inside, right hand, right inside of the right foot. Keep the knee pulling against the shoulder. Those of you that want, you can walk the hands forward and try to put the elbows down. We're gonna breathe here, looking at the mat, the floor. Great, let's do the other side. Left foot up, hands again straight up to the ceiling.
and right down on the inside. So the hand is right on the inside of the foot there. And elbows down if you got that before. Keep on breathing. Good, and step it back. And let's come to a seated position because we're gonna do our core work. We're gonna do it with the uh, twists in between and we'll start with the twist so you know what I'm talking about. Left elbow outside of the right leg, right hand directly behind you, six inches out from the tail. Pull the right shoulder back, gently look back. And then all the way over, uh, please, to the other side. Good, back to center, arms under the legs. This is one of five. We're gonna roll back under the tail. You could stay here the whole time. You can let go, lock the shoulders back with your arms parallel to the earth. You could straighten the legs. You could bring the hands in prayer towards the toes because you wanna to try to close that gap. That's how far it should be up. Or you can bring hands to the third uh, eye. Go across the legs, grab the shin, sit up really, whoops, sit up tall. I skipped the twist, didn't I? We'll get it on the next one. Number two, back up. I'm so used to doing that sit up. It's burned into my brain. Go ahead, put the heels down. We do the twist, left elbow outside of the leg. And then over, please, to the other side. Good, back up. Number three, I hope. We're gonna keep going with this mix up. Cross the legs, grab the shin, sit up tall. And up again, please. I believe this is number four. Good, heels down, we twist, left elbow outside, right elbow outside of that. And this will be the last one, whichever number it comes to. I can be a little bit of a perfectionist. It throws me for a loop if I jump in a different direction. We'll take our time, keep breathing. We keep working in acceptance. Excellent, hug the knees in, let's lie back. We're gonna grab the shins with the forearms and pull them down and bring the nose up. So you'll feel the low back and the hips lift off the ground when you pull those uh, shins down, stretching the lower back just a little bit. Excellent, feet down flat, feet and knees about uh, two fists apart. We're gonna thread the needle. So we're gonna take the uh, right, Ankle just down the uh, below the left knee, just slightly. We're going to feed the right arm through both legs, grabbing either the underside of the leg with both hands, so the left hand just comes around easily, or grabbing the shin. Let the head fall back on the earth real easy. You could flex the feet. You could think about rotating the right knee forward and away from you. And we are breathing all the time. Great, let's uh, switch it. So left foot comes up and then uh, down the inside, left hand feeds through, and then the other hand comes around and we're gonna uh, lay back here. You can flex the feet, you can rotate that left knee forward.
Good, unwind that, both feet back down again. Feet and knees, two fists apart, longest finger almost touching the heel. We lift the hips, as we lift the hips, tuck one shoulder, then the other, and intertwine the fingers and push the arm down as we push the hips up. We're gonna breathe. Those of you that wanna do Urdhva Dandarasana are probably already doing it. Excellent, we're gonna stay here a little bit. Great, back down. So we're gonna go upside down. You could go to the wall and put your feet up the wall with your arms and your back on the floors, the feet up the wall. That is the most excellent pose. Otherwise, I'm gonna do plow and shoulder stand if you wanna come along for that. Plow, we start with kicking the feet up and over the head, legs in the direction of straight, hands either on the back or intertwined fingers with the uh, arms down. And we're gonna breathe here. And if your hands are not on the back, place them there now and lift the feet straight up into the ceiling. Heavy shoulders, heavy elbows, light head, breathing, looking at the feet. Excellent, bend the legs, bring the knees down towards the ears, reach back, grab the soles of your feet and lower yourself in the dead bug. In dead bug, the knees are in the armpits, soles of the feet up to the sky. Great, uh, bring that knees into the chest for a moment. And imagine you have pencils, one on each knee drawing, uh, pointing up to the ceiling. We're gonna grab those knees, keep them together. And, and together, we're gonna draw a big circle on the ceiling with those pencils that are on the knees. It's one direction at first, keeping the head just loose on the ground. And then the opposite direction, please. And back to center, arms out like a T. We're gonna take a breath in as you breathe out, let the knees fall to the right as you look to the left. You can take the right hand on the legs, pushing their knees towards down. And we're gonna look out to the reaching uh, left hand. We're gonna stay here a nice long time. So let gravity do the work as best you can, but continue the conscious breathing. Excellent, back up and please over to the other side. Left hand on the legs if you need. I, I always need to do that, you might not. Reaching out and looking to the right, attempting to keep the shoulders flat on the mat. And then we relax into the gravity.
All right, back to center. Hug the knees into the chest. Thank yourself for coming out. We're going to end in five minute uh, five minute meditation. I'm going to do it seated. You can too if you prefer to lay down. That's awesome. That's up to you. Anyways, we're going to roll up to a seated position for those of you doing a seated meditation. I am going to sit on my rolled up mat. Um, you can roll your mat up. It just makes sitting for long periods of time uh, way uh, more reasonable. I'm going to set the timer for five minutes here. We cross the legs slightly easy, shoulders back, intertwined fingers or one hand on top of the other, thumbs touching, hands in the lap so the palms are facing up, chin slightly to the chest, shoulders back, eyes gently closed. We become aware of the body breathing itself. Just feel and experience the body breathing itself. If the mind is too jumpy, Breathe the body like we do in class and experience that. Put your whole attention on that. If the mind is still too jumpy, count those breaths that you are controlling. And when you get to 11, go back to one. And we will be here five minutes.
All right. Let's bring the hands to the heart center, rubbing them together, making a bit of fire. And then arms all the way up, receiving the gifts in the universe. We're going to take a breath in through the nose as much as we can get. We're going to breathe in more through the mouth and even more. Hold the breath, tighten the core, tighten the legs, lift the floor, hold all that, and then let everything out. Ah. You're living your dream, don't miss it. Namaste. Thank you so much for coming out this evening. It's danieloverberger.com. You can find links to my Venmo and PayPal there.